All right, today we're gonna talk about this 2022 Can-Am Defender Max in an HD10 model. Um, HD10 model is the highest horsepower model they sell right now. It's got 82 horsepower and you get upgraded to the high lift A-arms. So you can see they kind of come out flat and coming straight instead of coming straight down to the bowl joint give you a little bit more ground clearance we've been talking about getting a side by side for shoot probably a year year and a half and i don't know why we waited so long now that we have it we love it the reason i believe we waited so long we have a family of four my wife a 12 year old daughter and my nine year old son and myself so we need the seating for for four at least and then also we wanted more of a utility vehicle instead of just a straight up trail rig we'll use it more here around the house and uh, for hunting and just around the uh, property here for chores and whatnot well it finally sold me on the crew cab that's what i tried to talk myself out of one for so long i just did not want a crew cab because they are really long but a uh, guy I work with, he had an HD9, uh, exactly the same setup as this, all black. But the 9 has the 60, I think 65 horsepower. But he let me borrow it for a day. And I took it, took it out in the woods, took it to one of our, our hunting properties, worked on a food plot. And I was just blown away. It, it really, the turning radius is really tight. I took me and me and my kids my wife was working that day i believe and it was just awesome had plenty of room we could run down the down the road at 50 55 miles an hour and the thing just drove awesome he had upgraded to 30 inch tires but other than that they were the same machine as i talked about the hd10 we'll have a little more ground clearance just because of the high lift a arms that come factory then also Another friend of mine, he has the Honda Pioneer 1000 five-seater. And I really, I almost bought one of them because of, like I said, the crew cab is just so long, but we borrowed it and it's got the seats in the bed that flip up for, they say you can put adults in it, but my kids, they really didn't care for it either. So we went ahead and bit the bullet and and uh just got one of these we've had this for 500 miles now actually just yesterday i did the first oil change extremely easy to do yourself uh the the ease of maintenance on these things they're they seem like they're really set up really really good um and why did i go for this one over the the ranger i, I really can't say um the dealership i bought this from sells both uh one of my hunting buddies he has a pioneer uh xp 900 just a regular cab and he hasn't had very many problems with it which he didn't buy it new but uh, it didn't have very many miles on it when he bought it. i think he's had to put a bearing and maybe a cv shaft and a a fuel pump but just kind of maintenance wear and tear items i believe uh, i think i just wanted a can am just because it seems like in this area um a lot of people have the ranger and just kind of wanted something different um The one thing I do wish we would have hit, would have went ahead and got and just financed was some kind of doors. Um, you know, you can buy the limited that has heat and air and hard doors, but we didn't want to spend that money. But just the canvas doors with the plastic unzip windows are gonna be fine for us. The Can-Am, which I think the Can-Am was look the best. They're about 24, $2,500. You know, that's a pretty sizable chunk of change. And most of the dealerships would just finance and put everything on for you. This one here, the only thing I had added extra was the front windshield, the roof, and the back windshield. The front windshield and the roof is Can-Am. And then the rear windshield is Super ATV. But the dealership installed it and they just said they've had better luck with Can-Am stuff on the front and the top for wear and tear 
and the Super ATV for the, the back, uh, which is the poly, tinted poly, but it doesn't see as much uh, traffic and or wind and and uh, resistance and bugs and stuff as the front one does. I like the way it sets. I like the rims. I like everything about it. We got the DPS, which is basically the base model of one of these. As expensive as they are, it's still ridiculous to think it's a base model. The next one up has the front bumper and a winch, and it already has a factory roof. And then I believe there's a few other extras, maybe an upgraded seat and a sliding seat. We actually found one, a Labor Day special, from a place over in the next state over that they were advertising that was actually cheaper than the list price on this one. Well, when I called them and asked about it, they were gonna add about $2,500 for freight and assembly, but they didn't have listed on their internet price. So one thing you gotta be leery of on them online deals is the extras they add. So we used one of our local dealerships and we've been real, we was real happy with them. One thing I do like about the Can-Am is these flip down consoles. Have them front and rear. That the Polaris does not have, to my knowledge, on the 2022s anyway. The 2023s might be different. There's all kinds of spots to add accessories, uh, lights. It's got a diff lock and then a four wheel drive lock there. So there's your rear diff and then that's your four wheel drive. Got a little uh, cubby hole here for storage. And then you can add all kinds of extra stuff. There's compartments you can buy. They go underneath the seat. Of course it all adds up. You can spend as much as much on accessories as I think you can the machine, unfortunately. The bed has all kinds of, of storage options. Uh, we just added a two by four here. It's got different slots. You can change where you want it. It's got these rings in the bed for a five gallon bucket. So we just keep a, keep a chain and a couple things in there, straps, hammer, a uh, few, few maintenance items there. The bed dumps really, really easy. And that's your access to the engine and your maintenance. And with the engine being so, so far back, especially for the front passengers in the summertime or when it's hot, the heat's really not too much of an issue. The back seats, um, not, they could... Not really. They're not really? All right, my son said uh, they're not too bad. We've used the dump bed a couple times. And then you just push it down there. Independent front and rear suspension. One thing I noticed on this, and I looked online at forums, is it is kind of an issue for Can-Ams. Seems like all Can-Ams. Is the brakes are really squeaky. I don't know if they use, it's the material with their brake pads, but somebody on a Can-Am forum said to get an aftermarket pad and it pretty much cured it. We do like the window, the win window here, which is still poly, but it's scratch resistant. Has that to let a little, ba little bit of air in. And you can put it all the way up when you're, that's really nice for low speeds. In the woods, it lets all the air in. Going down the highway, you do get bombarded with the wind, but it's really stable. We've had it up and went, you know, 50, 55, and it'll shake a little bit, but I'm confident that it wouldn't flip up or nothing. So it seems to be built really well. I do like the looks of them. One thing about them over a Polaris, they are extremely tall. Um, so if you are a bigger, taller person, that could be a plus. It's a non-issue for me. I'm only 5'9". My wife's about the same. 
So that's we've got more than enough headroom than what we would need. I think the Ranger might be a little bit shorter and the windshield seems like it's laid back more. The thing drives really good, really smooth. got the slow moving vehicle we do ride it out on the rural roads in our local town to ride them in in town on the side streets you got to have turn signals and a horn we don't have that installed yet and that's doesn't come from the factory with turn signals or a horn but there's all kinds of kits you can buy for it Here's the fuel tank. That is kind of odd. Uh, Polaris is on the driver's side, I believe, and Can-Am is on the passenger. Just how they do it, I, I guess. And the tank isn't the biggest. It's probably eight to 10 gallons. I, I've got it in eco mode right now. You can change modes. There's the eco mode, a work mode, and a normal. There's actually a three position rocker switch you can buy, and it's already wired up for it so you can change it quickly. Now you have to go into the, the dash on the display and toggle through some options and change it. We've got it in eco mode right now, we're trying to save a little fuel for when we're just running down the road and don't need all the, the power or the speed. We've got the nets and seat belts. The kids really like it, it's comfortable. One thing too, the headlights, I don't know if there's any adjustment. The headlights, they're they're bright enough, but they seem like they shine up towards the trees a little bit more than what I like. I don't know if there's any adjustment to them or not. We'd like to get a light bar anyway, so it's probably gonna be a non non-issue once we get the light bar. One thing that was a must when I test drove it, it's really weird not having any kind of rear view mirror, side mirror. So that was the first thing which they actually threw that in, but we had to have some kind of uh, way to see behind us. It's just weird. And it's hard to keep them clean. There's all kinds of nooks and crannies. It's got a full plastic skid plate which it is plastic, but it does seem like it's covers everything important as far as the drive line and the motor. Then under where your feet go, there's no skid plate. It's just the plastic floorboards. I do know they have some upgraded skid plates you can get, but for the type of riding we do, we're not gonna have to worry about it. I have heard stories of people going out in the woods and running sticks up through the floorboards, but we don't get that crazy. We pulled some tree uh, logs and limbs around and used the dump bed for hauling sticks off and stuff and everything's worked really good so far. But we've mostly, me and my son, we've used it to go hunting. It would be nice to get a, a rack that goes in the receiver hitch there. It is pretty high for pulling a deer up, but I mean, it's doable, but it'd be nice to have something hanging off the back a little bit closer to the ground. That's just a standard two-inch receiver hitch, so you can buy them racks at any Walmart or Real King or TSC. So anyway, far we've had this thing 500 miles and that's why we chose the the crew cab just for the amount of people we were wanting to haul and still have the utility portion of it. So it's worked out great for us and it, the turning radius is extremely, 
I mean, it's extremely tight. Obviously, it's not going to be as tight as a three-seater, but we have had no issues. I mean, you might have to make a one reverse move, but it's not like terrible. And I haven't had it in any trails or tough riding or anything yet, but we just don't normally do that kind of stuff. So, well, so we've been really happy with it. And, you know, I, I looked on YouTube several times looking at Polaris and Rangers and stuff like that. And just thought I'd throw my two cents in here and let you know what what we think of it. Uh, a brush guard and a winch, that's probably second and third modifications behind the doors on our to-do list, so. But definitely roof, windshield, back windshield, number one, doors second, and then brush, uh, brush guard or bumper on the front and the rear, and then a, a winch and then some kind of audio system. We just have a we just have a Bluetooth speaker we throw on the dash and it's fine for when we're just riding around around on the local roads here. So it's worked out great for us and we really enjoy it and hope to enjoy it for years to come. Uh, if you have any questions, just hit them there in the in the comment box and I'll try to reply best I can. I say it's still a pretty new machine to us. I think it's October 29th and we got it right after Labor Day there in September of 2022. We put like 500 miles on it, just changed oil yesterday. It's been mostly road riding. It's only got 26 hours on it. So as we use it, I'm sure we'll we'll find more things we like and dislike, and we might do an update update video as we uh, as we live with it, and as we add accessories, we might video that as we're installing them and let you know how easy it is because a dealer dealer around here probably charges 65 80 dollars an hour so as expensive as they are if a guy can do them by theirself on his own maybe save a little money that's our plan anyway so all right well i'd say that's it for our 2022 can-am defender max and uh let's say we'll, we'll update you as we add stuff to it and if we have any other likes or dislikes.